Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a documentary sport film, The Fourth Phase. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The documentary begins with a brief narration about the sea. The narrator and main focus of the documentary is the famous snowboarder, Travis. He states that the sea is something more than what it seems like many things in this world. He remarks that he is a seeker eager to seek out the sea. He shares his insights about the three phases of water and its other properties. He also mentions the uncountable, unseeable states that could happen with something as volatile as water. He concludes that there must be a fourth phase to round it all up. In the next scene, they show a montage of water in its natural state, as well as water that has been tampered with by human interaction. The second narrator remarks that as children, we tend to be keener to explore and figure out the answers all on our own, and to understand the coming story we must have the curious minds of children. He also states that because of the perceived state of science, people have been afraid to challenge the known truth, and to get the real truth, people must learn how to dig down beneath foundations. The next scene transitions to Travis in Wyoming during his snowboarding training. He glides through the hills of snow with grace and ease. Accompanying him are his crew on snowmobiles, helping him go up the snowy terrain. After a grueling play through snow, the crew celebrates a successful training session. His crew states that working with Travis is a hard task because they have to set up and excavate the hill at the right angles, which takes hours of hard work. After they finish setting up the ramps and snow hills, a montage shows the extreme snow play that Travis executes daily. They go up and down huge snow slopes, sometimes hitting the very top of tall pine trees. One of his crew thanks Travis for showing him the fun and dedication that comes with snowboarding. After finishing up another day of snowboarding, the crew celebrates another successful play through the snow. One of Travis' friends, Brian, notes that he and Travis share the same fascination with water. He is in awe of the sheer force of nature that water is and praises its many properties and many phases, both natural and human. He shares his thoughts on the process of the water cycle and how it is akin to how humans follow our own cycles in our lives. The crew discovers an arch between two snow slopes. They devise a plan on how they will approach it. Travis reaches the peak of the mountain and notices the snow on one side of the slope falls down to the Mexican Gulf and the other side flows down to the Pacific. He then proceeds to snowboard from the peak of the slope and easily glides down. They note that Travis has turned snowboarding from a regular sport to a fascinating science project. One of the crew begins to explain the journey water takes to become snow and what comes after. He explains that water that turns into the snow from the peak of snowy mountains then flows down into bigger bodies of water and through currents that carry them to other parts of the world eventually turns to snow on top of other mountains, which repeats the process once more. Sometimes snow forms gigantic and breathtaking formations that you normally wouldn't encounter in regular snowy areas. Travis seeks places such as these and tells his crew to plan out the possible places within the formation where they could camp, snowboard, hike, etc. After discovering a gigantic snow formation in a remote location, Travis tells his crew to plan their next expedition. Due to the remote area being a protected wilderness, planes and other aircraft are forbidden, which means they have to hike all the way. The crew notes that Travis is determined, and the only thing he fears is failure. En route to the remote area, Travis reveals his appreciation for the calm breeze and the beauty of the sea. He remarks that he also loves sailing just as much as snowboarding because it allows him to be free and true to himself. The footage that follows shows the crew's journey and how they spent their days on the sailboat on the way to the remote area. The crew arrives in Japan, where Travis meets a new addition to the crew named Landvik. They take a train to Sendai, where they can showcase their skills in snowboarding. Travis remarks that Japan is the snowiest place on Earth, and it shows in their infrastructure due to the amount of water they receive. Their guide through the snowy forests of Japan tells them that normally it is considered disrespectful to the gods for humans to enter the forests. But he notes that if you treat the forests with respect and dignity, the gods will be fine with your presence. Travis and his crew begin their snowboarding play through the forests. The new terrain excites the crew as they board through thicker piles of snow and use fallen trees as ramps to get much longer air times. Travis shows his appreciation for the forest and says that places like these are the only ones that get him to showcase his creativity while snowboarding. Landvik states that the new terrain would require some familiarity, but once you are familiar with the snow, that is when you have fun. A montage shows them snowboarding through the forest, showcasing the foreign beauty of the unfamiliar territory. The many frozen hills, lakes, and rivers could be seen in the distance. The beautiful formations of snow that they came for, just looming beyond, greatly delights the crew. 
The crew says that they are fine with snowboarding in smoother places, but Travis convinces them every time that they need to go to the snowiest of snow formations to truly enjoy it. Travis sets his eyes on the Japanese Alps. Though the danger is immense and the weather is at times unforgivable, this does not phase the crew. During the evening, a Japanese fire festival is in full swing with all the locals celebrating. The crew joins in the celebration and they see an incredible display of fire as the locals wave around burning torches. By the end of the celebration, they burn a huge pyre that erupts into flames, seen from miles away. The crew also takes this opportunity to snowboard through the night, despite the pitch-black darkness of the Japanese Alps. Travis gracefully glides through with only the moonlight to guide him. He states that it makes him feel alive. The crew state that many people cling to their own idea of a certain truth, but with so much that is happening around the world, it is hard to stick with the known truth when there is much we do not know about our world yet. The crew arrives in Russia, this time on a helicopter. The crew states that Travis is obsessed with himself and that he puts all his time and energy into anything he sets his mind to. The crew snowboard through the volcanic snow of Russia. They are hesitant about the volcano, but there is no stopping Travis once he sets his mind on something. The crew then arrives on the beach and attempts to surf in cold conditions. The crew plays around in the waves and takes turns surfing the cold waves. Some of the crew remain in the helicopter, confused as to why Travis enjoys surfing at this temperature. Travis returns to the helicopter after a few minutes, noting that any more time spent on the water would give him hypothermia. During a meeting with the crew, they decide which part of the world they would visit next. They consider going to a place like Japan or Wyoming, but since they frequent these places, they decide to go to a remote place in Russia instead. After arriving, the crew stays in their cabin, watching the weather reports to determine the perfect weather conditions to snowboard. When the weather report finally comes back positive, they then take a helicopter ride to the Kunal Islands. Unfortunately, the military denies them access to the island. They are detained for a few hours, but a few kids, who are fans of Travis, cheer from outside the helicopter, prompting the crew to meet them. The crew is delighted to see that snowboarding is alive, even in the most remote of places. Travis returns home in disappointment, despite planning this trip for two years. With the failure of the Kudal Islands behind them, they set their sights on Alaska. The crew lands in the mountainous areas of Alaska. The crew discovers that the snow would be dangerous to snowboard on, due to the state of the snow, which prompts one of the crew members to leave. Travis is disappointed, but accepts the crew member's decision. After waiting two weeks for good snow, the opportune moment finally arrives for Travis, and he is dropped at one of the tallest peaks in the area. He soars through the mountains and asks to be dropped at another peak again. Travis spends hours coming up with new tricks every time he comes across an interesting patch of snow. The crew states that Travis pushes them hard sometimes, but they ultimately respect his decisions because they can see that it is not arrogance that drags him, but sheer determination. They note that Travis only makes calculated decisions, and he only attempts dangerous slopes if he can see that it is possible and within his level of skill. The helicopter drops Travis off between the split of two mountains. Travis slowly pushes himself off and begins his ride. Though the path narrows, Travis keeps his cool and executes a beautiful ride through the snow. He asks to be dropped off at other points and spends the rest of the day performing inhuman stunts, no matter the danger the slopes pose. The rest of the crew observe from a distance, knowing that joining Travis would put them in danger. The crew cheers him on at the base of the slope as Travis performs a difficult stunt down the slope. The crew congratulates each other on seeing Travis back to his old self after his injury. Unfortunately, during one of the stunts, Travis lands awkwardly on the snow. He is taken to a hospital, where the doctors tell him that his injury has now piled on top of a previous injury. They state that muscles have wrapped around his spine, which the doctor has never seen before. Though the injury was devastating, the doctor remarks that he's lucky to have lived through the accident. Travis is then taken to the operating room, where the doctors operate on his spine. A year after his injury, Travis comes back to snowboarding. They arrive in Alaska on a plane. Before the main goal, Travis decides to warm up first. Despite the unfortunate injury he suffered, he comes back even stronger. He executes tricks that he has done in the past with ease despite his injury. His crew keeps a close eye on him at all times to make sure he doesn't overexert himself during his warm-up. From the sky, they see Travis perform all kinds of new stunts just like before, but during one of the stunts, Travis falls victim to an avalanche. Travis notes that he doesn't know the difference between reckless optimism and the possible. Travis wakes up after the avalanche grunting. The helicopter descends down to check on Travis. Luckily, he has not suffered any major injuries, but because of the accident, the crew begs him to abandon the expedition. 
He heeds their cries and abandons the expedition, despite not being able to conquer the challenge he has set his eyes on. Travis took the accidents as a sign. He began appreciating life more than ever. Despite his last two outings being failures, he continues to pursue snowboarding and the many joys it brings. The documentary ends with Travis taking things much more slowly than before. He is learning from his past mistakes, that being reckless won't work all the time. Though he doesn't go on expeditions to such dangerous places anymore, he continues snowboarding in safer locations. He still goes out sailing from time to time, appreciating the water and all its qualities. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.